Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Alderperson Boren? Here. Ryan Sazma? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Here. Marilyn Montemayor? Here. David Hoffman? Here. Don Svitan? Here. Seven present. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I'd like to ask you to please stand and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll uh, go through an introduction of the committee members and staff. Dave, you want to start out? Dave, I'm a member. Mike Vandersteen, Mayor and Chair. Chad Pelishek, Planning Director. Steve Soglowski from the Planning Department. Marilyn Montemayor, Citizen Member. Uh, Ryan Sazma, Public Works. Ron Sweetan, Member. Online. Alderman Jim Boren of the team. District. Jerry Jones, Vice Chairman and Citizen Member. Thank you, everyone. Next, uh, I need to ask if there's a conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda. Seeing no response, then we'll approve, uh, go on to the minutes. Uh, the minutes from our Planning Commission meeting on September 15th are up for your review. I'd entertain a motion. I so move. I'll second. Thank you for that motion and support to approve those minutes. One last call for any discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Under items for discussion and possible action, item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by Quick Trip Incorporated to construct, construct a new Quick Trip at the northwest corner of South Business Drive and Broadway Avenue, the former Vandervard property. Steve. All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, Tri Melizva is here from representing Quick Trip. And um, this is a property that we've been taking a look at for a couple of different projects now. One is the um, Oscar Apartments. And recently then um, Quick Trip had come in for this property at uh, the north west intersection of Broadway Avenue and South Business Drive. We recently rezoned the property from urban residential to urban commercial. And now Quick Trip is in the process of submitting their conditional use permit to the plan commission to do the actually uh, construction of the store. So what we're taking a look at is an 11,000 a uh, 120 square foot convenience store with attached single bay car wash, an attached dumpster enclosure and separate fueling canopies for gas and diesel trucks. Um, the proposed service uh, station is 1,120 square feet in size and it's a new prototype. I'm sure uh, Troy can speak to that a little bit, but they've expanded the retail floor area as well as the kitchen and mechanical <clears throat> space on all the, uh, the main level with no basement. Their intention would be to start construction approximately the end of 2021 or in the spring of 2022, depending on uh, when the development is ready and all their design documents have been completed. Once construction starts, it takes approximately about four months of uh, construction schedule. Um, Quick Trip is a family owned Wisconsin company and they're vertically integrated, which means they're producing um, their bottles their <clears throat> and they manufacture about 80% of what they sell within their store, the pizza, the hot food, breads, buns, bakery, watery, uh, water, chips, candy, and milk. Um, they del deliver fresh bakery goods, commodities, and fresh food to their stores daily with their own delivery trucks. So this minimizes the number of outside vendors that need to access their um, facility. Quick Trip also has its own fueling, uh, fueling blending facilities for fuel and that helps us control their quality of their fuel products and also um, uh, limits, the, uh, they have more uh, control of when their fueling trucks are coming to and delivering to the site. The project is, uh, you know, it's a redevelopment of the former Vandevar site, which will upgrade the property and continue redevelopment of that property. And this uh, project is estimated to be about $2 million. Um, with regards to employees, they'll have between about 28 and 35 full and part-time employees and two to eight staff at any given time. 
as far as some of the site uh, uh, questions or things that they're looking at. Uh, Quick Trip does have a little bit of outdoor selling of merchandising. Uh, one is an LP storage tank, which they locate at the front of the store. They do have some ice storage that they're planning on the uh, two freezers on the east side of the building. They do have some firewood that they have between the front door and some softener salt that they have on their canopies um, so that customers don't have to pick it up from inside the store, but they can uh, pick it up right at the fueling canopies. The Quick Trip has uh, a number of different uh, signs that they're looking at uh, for the, this particular site. Um, in working with Quick Trip, they weren't quite sure of final design, but uh, at this point in time, they, they showed some uh, signage uh, on the building, um, on the fueling uh, pump, uh, the canopies, and then they do show uh, a freestanding uh, <clears throat> monument sign that would be located at the um, southeast <clears throat> corner of the site that would face uh, Business Drive and Broadway. Access to the site, if we could just go to the site plan. Um, access to the site is proposed to come from two new ingress-egress drives along Broadway Avenue. The easternmost driveway close to the Business Drive is gonna be a right in and right out only. The second drive will be from a shared uh, access on the west end, and that is the private drive that serves both Quick Trip as well as the Oscar Apartments. So that well, that private road goes from basically Broadway Avenue all the way up to 15th Street and Georgia Avenue on the north side. Um, Quick Trip is proposing to have three ingress egress drives off that private road. Uh, staff did question the need for the three and most specifically the south uh, west one that's closest to the intersection of the private road and broadway avenue um the specific concern is with that drive and with the amount of that this area is going to develop there's likely to be a decent amount of traffic at the intersection of broadway and permitting an access drive so close to this intersection could create potential vehicular and pedestrian safety issues uh, based on the amount of vehicles uh, semi trucks and pedestrians so uh, based on those concerns <clears throat> staff is going to be recommending that the plan commission consider uh, allowing two uh, driveway cuts on that permanent drive and that the applicant could work with staff in adjusting where those could be located. Um, one other item to bring up just in terms of the applicant and maybe this is also with the uh, private developer for the Oscar is that that is a private road and so it'd be interesting to know you know what the planned construction material was for that road because it is going to take a significant amount of traffic with some semi trailers and uh, you know the customers from the quick trip as well as the apartments. Lastly, the applicant is proposing to share a stormwater facility with the Oscar apartment project. Basically at the um, northeast corner of that site, um, when the Oscar development came in, the apartment projects, they had indicated at that time that they would be working with Quick Trip to, to share a stormwater facility. Um, and so that will have to be um, uh, constructed in such a fashion that's approved by the engineering department that allows for both to go in there and then Quick Trip and the developer would or and the Oscar Apartments uh, developer would be required to submit a uh, easement agreement that allows for Quick Trip to have their stormwater you know facility drain off their site and onto the Oscar property. A couple of variances just to mention. Um, typically, uh, uh, the, the, this is uh, zoned urban commercial, and in the urban commercial zone, there's typically four signs that are permitted, and Quick Trip is proposing five. Um, they are requesting to install a 12-foot tall monument sign, and the uh, height required for that is typically eight feet. I think that might be uh, further to the bottom. Maybe you, All the way down. You yeah. might have been right. Yeah, keep going. We're almost there. More. You more. And uh, basically, that monument sign you can see right there um, is like many a couple others in their city, and it takes uh, a lot of the materials and colors. It's electronic reader board, so that's something that the plan commission is approving as well. There are a few canopy signs on both the fueling and the diesel um, uh, uh, canopies. 
and then the applicant is proposing to locate their stormwater facility on onto the Oscar property. Um, typically, there is um, the maximum amount of foot candles for lighting at the property line is 0.5 foot candles. There's a couple of spots on the property where it goes just over that, and those typically are at those access drives. So that's from a safety perspective. And then they are asking a variance from the locational and buffer yard requirements. Um, uh, there's uh, uh, quite a bit of landscaping that they're looking to add to the site, and staff was okay with that. One um, item that I didn't include that I maybe want to just kind of verify with the applicant is typically a conditional use permit is good for a year. And based on some of the development concerns, uh, Quick Trip is not sure if they're going to be pulling that permit the fall of next year or potentially the spring of 22. So staff was going to recommend uh, a, a variance and a condition that says that the applicant will obtain all their building permits by May 31st, 2022. Otherwise, the conditional use permit would be null and void. So I'm sure the applicants could speak a little bit more to that. But other than that, staff is recommending approval of the project subject to the conditions you have before you. And I can answer any questions and the applicants here. Did you want to respond to that question, Todd? <clears throat> <clears throat> sure. Good afternoon, Troy Malezova, real estate manager with Quick Trip 1626 Oak Street, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Thanks for the time. Again, appreciate all the time and effort that the city staff has put in working with us on this project. Um, we think we've got a good project to offer here, be a benefit to the neighborhood and the city. Uh, Quick Trip's got a long history in the city, and we're looking to continue to be of service and grow. As we've seen the last six months, uh, people have uh, kind of focused when we've all been looking for uh, grocery options, where can you get product? And with our, our, our stores, people have found that they can trust and find products being in stock, being clean and being available. So we found great success with that and look forward to uh, growing here in the future with the city. Uh, we're excited to, excited to be part of the Oscar project. Um, this obviously is a, a good commercial corner at a signalized intersection. We think we can provide uh, a good a product in a clean environment that fits in with the Oscar apartments to the north as well as the existing neighborhoods to the east, to the west, to the south, and bring a new presence uh, on South Business Drive that we don't have uh, in this area of town today. Um, with that, we're in full agreement with, I think, 39 of the 40 conditions that Steve's got on the staff report, so we did a good job working uh, to meet those requirements. As was mentioned uh, about the three curb cuts, I guess if you can go to the traffic a truck circulation plan, it's listed SP. And I just want to explain a little bit of why we've got those go. three curb cuts and what yep. our logic was in that regard. So what this plan is showing you is how Quick Trips delivery trucks would get into the site. So you'll see a truck coming in off of Broadway and then uh, navigating back to the northeast to utilize either the fuel pumps or to drop fuel at the uh, underground storage tanks, which are kind of on the eastern side of the site. And then that truck would then continue north, circulate back to the west, and then head south out the shared access drive, which will be on the quick trip parcel. And it'll be paved and built in concrete in coordination with, with uh, the Oscar development. So it'll, it'll share as a served ac shared access point, but it'll be plowed, maintained, uh, and concreted uh, on the quick trip parcel and utilized as part of our parcel. So that uh, fuel truck would exit back out on the Easter, excuse me, the, the westerly drive uh, back to Broadway. Our grocery truck is shown coming in on that easterly drive, heading north, making a right-hand turn north of the store, and then making another right-hand turn to get to the east facade of the store where the, the uh, service door is. There's a gray loading zone. You can see that truck parked on the east facade of the building between the store and the diesel fuel. And then my understanding is that when that truck would leave, it would head straight south, hang a right-hand turn, and head back to that south drive that you, that you see of the three access points. And then that truck would turn left to go back out that shared access drive on the eastern side of the lot line. Again, it would be one delivery a day and it's Quick Trip's truck that comes so we can control the time so we don't want them there at uh, busy times in the morning or busy times 
uh, in the evening peak. So that's the primary movement that we'd see. Most folks are gonna be coming in off of that uh, in only drive off, off Broadway. They'd navigate north towards the pumps, north to the parking in the store, and then as they're exiting the site, uh, they'd head back, make a left-hand turn to head back to the west and then south back out that westerly access drive. I could see cars coming from the neighborhood to the west making a left-hand turn in that westerly drive and then getting in that first drive to the south to head back north in line with folks coming in uh, from the east. So that's the reason we have that access point there. Generally, I would, I would agree with Steve that if you could space it farther apart, it would make uh, better flow. But for us, we've got two reasons. One is to get that one truck a day grocery delivery out safely. And then if we can get folks coming from the neighborhood from the west, making that left-hand turn, if they continued north and then made a right-hand turn, there'd be a little bit more conflict for them closer to the store. So that's kind of the, the thought we had there. If, if it would make sense, we could sign that so that it wasn't uh, an exit for cars, if you will, coming back out of the site. If we put some signs that said, do not exit, other than uh, the truck delivery or do not an exit, we could do something like that to make sure we don't have uh, as much congestion at that driveway. So that was, that was the one difference we had in terms of thoughts of why we had that there. Um, other than that, I think Steve did a good job summarizing. We'd have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 employees working at the site, uh, be a multi-million dollar investment. And then on the timing, the uh, Oscar developer is gonna provide the site in a, what we call a pad ready condition. They're gonna do the grading. They're gonna get the stormwater all set up. They're gonna get the road actually installed. And our timing based on our construction then inside the lot lines is gonna be following them. So from our standpoint, we're a little bit unsure if it would be late in 2021 or if it would be sometime early in 2022. So that would be the reason for our request of the, uh, a little bit of an extension on the uh, time frame for the conditional use permit. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. So if I may just say, Mayor Vandersteen has uh, left and Dave Hoffman is going to resume as the chair. So go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. I got some questions for you. Um, when the, the, the one truck that's, that stays along the east side of the building, does that leave in the middle? The middle driveway, or are you saying it's leaving from the southernmost driveway? <clears throat> yeah, what, what they told me is they had a program that they would, it would leave the southern driveway. Why, why wouldn't it just exit the well, middle driveway? Yeah. I, I think the turning movement when they pull out, I don't know that there's enough room for them and they thought there might be more congestion between the store yeah. and the pumps and there'd be, there'd be less conflict if they came south. We can generally get them yeah. coming yeah. later in the yeah. evening, 8, 10 o'clock when the, the store isn't right. quite as busy. But if, if for them it sounded like their movement was easiest to make coming back straight south and then east, yeah, that, or that, excuse me, west. The southernmost driveway is way too close to that Broadway Avenue intersection. I can see someone going westbound on Broadway. They're going to make a right to go north, and someone trying to exit that driveway at the same time. That's going to be a hot little corner. Does that make sense at all? Someone's going to be traveling westbound on Broadway. They'll make a right onto your service road, and at the same time, someone's going to be exiting that driveway. I mean, you can put the signs up there, but that's, that's not going to work. I mean, okay. putting up a no exit or you know, truck only use, it's just it's not going to work. Well, so, yeah, I, I think what we're trying to do is, again, get folks, if, they're, if someone is coming westbound on Broadway and they're coming into our site, they're going to take that first, first driveway to get into the pumps. It'll be a, a nice, smooth transition mm -hmm. for them. So there wouldn't be a reason for them other than uh, if they're going to the Oscar, that'd probably be Well, well yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you've got 240 yeah. units up there. There's going to be a lot of cars yeah. going that way. You're going to have to make this work with two driveways. That, that, that driveway is way too close to the intersection, so okay. I don't... I don't see any other way around it. Okay, that's that's kind of that's a real dangerous movement through there. It's just it's just too close. Okay. Again, we can work with staff. Can we still approve something like this, Steve? So work with staff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, basically, at, right <laughs> at this point in time, there's a condition that talks about allowing the applicant to work with staff in terms of uh, submitting a site plan. Um, the change would probably be a little bit more curbing over there, and there might be a little bit of difference from a plan commission perspective along that west side 
but it really wouldn't change the overall flow and, and uh, site development itself. So the recommendation at this time was to approve it with that subject to them working with staff. And then if we had any issues, we'd bring it back. But I can't imagine there, there wouldn't be anything that we couldn't work out from that perspective. Right. We're happy to work. We've had a good relationship working with you guys and happy to do that too. Yeah. I, I, just, I just wanted to explain the logic of what, sure. what they had input in terms of how they got to where they got to. Right. And, 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 I'm, and I just want to stress from a safety point, there's, that, that's going to be a busy access road, especially for the people living there. And, you know, that's going to be a big exit point. I can see that being a conflict. I really can. Right. And we want it to be safe as yep. well. Obviously, we want people to be able to come back okay. and feel safe and welcome. So we're, we're with you on that. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I have, Dave, I have a question. Yes, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, you were talking about that, and I, and I agree with you there. Uh, when you come off of uh, South Business Drive and take a right onto Broadway, and then you're going to take a right to get access to the quick trip, about how many, about how many feet from Broadway would be the turn into quick trip as it, as it stands right now? Oh, I'm guessing it's probably a good 150 feet. Uh, no. Oh, so it's I, not going to be your. You're not going to take a quick right turn off of uh, off of broad uh, off of business drive onto Broadway, and it's not going to be immediate. There's going to no. be a little a little time for you to put on your blinker and make your turn in case somebody's right on your rear end. Do you have that dimension are, by any chance? I, I are don't you have the asking Jim the driveway, the right in, right out driveway on the south side, and then the one on the the west southwest driveway off the access road? No. The, the distance from there, or are you asking for the distance between the south, southernmost, southwest driveway on the private road to the to Broadway Street? Well, what I'm concerned about is if I'm going down South Business Drive, and I want to take a right on Broadway, where do I where do I get into Quick Trip, and how far of a drive is it once I get off of Broadway to make my turn into Quick Trip? Yeah, that Ryan, you're probably right. That it probably is. What do you, Troy? Any idea on that? I'm guessing it's got to be close to a hundred something feet. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm just guessing. Because yeah, I, I'm looking at the trunk truck length that's there, just on that, uh, on that diagram, drive. and that's probably you know a good. Um, I would say probably in that 150 feet yeah. range. Another factor is you've got a large, substantial right away on Business Drive. Right. So there's also space offsite farther to the east between the curb line on business drive and the start of this property. So it's, it's a pretty good distance. I would, I would say. Uh, also, uh, I was, I was also going to ask on average, on average with your locations, how, how often are you visited by the, uh, uh, the, the uh, fuel tankers and do you also try to stagger when they come in at not the busy, busiest hours of the uh, facility? No, good question. Yes, um, on average, it depends on how much fuel is sold, but I would say a fair number is probably every other day um, is probably the average. And with that, we do have the ability, since we do schedule our own fuel deliveries, the ability to control the times that those are done. And again, those are tried to be done in obviously not the peak business hours from our, our guests and customer standpoint. So we've got the ability to make those come kind of the less busy times to make sure they can do what they need in a safe manner and provide that product without gumming up the work, so to speak. Uh, just one more uh, for Ryan. Uh, Ryan, those entries, those entries and exits to the facility, I would imagine those roads are going to be engineered so that there's uh, plenty of room for the uh, for the grocery semis to come in and the fuel tankers to come in logistically to make their necessary turns uh, from the plans, do you see any concerns with that or does it look like it's going to be adequate? No, it's, it's adequate. They're, they're showing all the, all, all the turning movements for that access road on the, on the plan set. So yes, it's, it's designed correctly for width-wise. And I have one more question, and that is, uh, if I'm renting an apartment at the Oscar and I'm looking out east, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what I would see. Uh, is the Oscar going to be still quite a bit north from where Quick Trip is, or if I've got an apartment on the first floor of the Oscar and I'm looking east, 
Am I going to see uh, landscaping and trees? Am I going to see the quick trip? What am I going to see aesthetically that that's going to look nice for the tenants? I think to answer that question from the Oscar, so the the quick trip is going to be lower than the Oscar, if I recall. So you're probably going to be looking down into the back of the building and some of the, um, you know, the roof and roof lines and stuff, because I think the the topography was such that the apartments were higher than quick trip, wasn't it? Ryan, I drove I drove by there today, and that's kind of the idea that I got that the Oscar would kind of be up on that up on that west west hill part of the property, and Quick Trip was going to be lower. But I didn't know how that was going to be how that was going to be filled in for the Quick Trip property. But aesthetically, you think it'll be okay, Chad, when they look out? Yeah, I think so. And I think what you know the way the buildings are located, they're they're running north and south, so the ends of the buildings, you know, maybe somebody has one window that looks at this, but the majority of the windows are going to be on the east and west side of the buildings, the units. Right. So well, that's what I'm that's what I'm referring to. If you're looking out of looking out of the east side of your apartment looking east that that's what i was concerned about what what those what those tenants are going to see i think they're going to look east really and look at the the uh tree line along south business drive on the west side i mean i would i don't remember the floor plan of the um apartments but i would venture to say there's probably uh stairs on the end ends of the uh buildings that would face towards quick trip so I would venture to say that those the people aren't going to. I mean, yeah, they may see it, but they're not going to. It's not going to be the first thing they see. Okay, thank you, Jim. If you look about on page eighteen, uh, seventeen and eighteen show kind of some site plans of the Oscar, and there's one with an aerial that doesn't show the Quick Trip. Quick Trip is located on Lot B, but you can get an idea as far as where the apartments are and what Chad's talking about in terms of that uh, south end of those apartments that would be looking in is probably just that thin section because they are facing north and south towards uh, South Business Drive. And then when you go to the actual site plan on um, page uh, 15, it shows a little bit of landscaping and you can see on the north side of that site plan, typically the city has what's referred to as a buffer yard requirement, which whenever a commercial property uh, 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 is adjacent or shares a common lot line with a residential property, they have to have what's referred to as a buffer yard requirement. And typically what that means is there's additional landscaping and things of that nature from a point perspective that they have to put in more. So when you take a look at that landscape plan, you can see that the north and kind of northeast corners of the quick trip site have a lot more heavier landscaping to try to deal with that buffering of that uh, commercial development to that residential development. Yeah, when I was looking that over, when I was looking that over earlier, earlier today, I was glad to see that there's going to be additional landscaping rather than a fence. I think if the landscaping uh, is well maintained. It'll be uh, a lot more appealing than a fence. That was one of the things we talked with Quick Trip about, and instead of having a fence, uh, we, we agreed and they agreed that we'd just rather have more landscaping to kind of service as a, a green a fence instead of just a, a hard a hardscape fence structure. Right. Yeah, but I'd like to clarify something, Troy, too, is I believe that first driveway to the east uh, to the east off of uh, Broadway, I believe that's a write-in only. I don't have the traffic study in front of me, so I'd just like to make a, I'd like to make a note, whatever the traffic study states, that's, a, that's what we're going to have to do, but I'm pretty sure it's a write-in only. Correct. That's what we've got. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right and in. It, that's right yep. That's what we we have it as a write in, write out, and um, we had spoken about that, and that is a condition too. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure in the write out. I believe it's just a write in. Oh, correct? oh, yeah. From oh, traffic I study. see. Okay, yeah. correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so then if that's the case, I would just need to um, amend. Mm -hmm. Give me 
one second here. Uh, condition number 27 presently says right in, right out. That should just be right in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Dave, this is Jerry with a question. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, just uh, two points. Uh, one, to clarify, Steve, I apologize if you've gone over this already. With the car wash facing the north toward the apartments, do we have a time frame that the car wash will be opened and closed, and where are the vacuums? Right now, there is no specific condition that indicates uh, a specific time frame. I know, I know that I think uh, uh, by Festival Foods, we had some issues and I think there was a time frame there. I can't, I, I don't recall. Uh, I, the other ones do not have it. So I had not put a specific condition in terms of uh, uh, car wash hours of operation. Troy, any idea what that typically is? I mean, usually, usually we often, most often are 24 seven for the car wash. Here, I think we're gonna have commercial to the west of us. And as you saw in the plan, the apartments are pretty far to the north. Yeah. So I think as long as we comply with noise ordinances and yeah. those type of things, I think we should- 24 be a lot, is be, what you're after. Correct. Yeah. So Jerry, what they're after in this particular is to be able to operate at 24 seven. And I had I did not put anything in there other than there is just a, a general condition um, that states the uh, number four, the car wash facility will meet all zoning requirements, including but not limited to noise, vibration, hazardous materials. So, so if there was, say, some complaints, then at that point in time, we'd have to work with Quick Trip on addressing those. Okay, that's fine. That's and you you hit on the point that I was making. We had that issue with the one over at Festival because they were a little closer. But I just wanted to get that on the record that we aren't we aren't restricting them at all, and I'm fine with that. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve, subject to staff recommendations as amended. I'll second. Thank you for that motion. Second. Uh, discussion on the roll call. Roll call. Hearing none. Uh, older person born? Aye. Ryan Aye. Sasma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. David Huffman? Aye. Don Svitan? Aye. Six ayes. Motion passes. Alright. Thank you. Good luck with your time. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Alright. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. So we have uh, Ross Warner here from Warner Homes, who is doing uh, the first subdivision in some time in the city of Sheboygan. So uh, in February, uh, the Werners had come in with a preliminary plat for uh, the partic uh, Stonebrook edition number one. And this is a, a 132 lot subdivision that they indicated would be in phases. What we're taking a look at today is the final plat for phase one, which will include 78 lots, and that's lots 14 through 91. The park in both stormwater ponds and the initial phase would include both entrances and install the main utilities and stormwater infrastructure that would support the subsequent phases. Uh, 35 of the lots are to be mixed residential. And again, mixed, resident, or a mixed residential zone permits single family and two family. Um, it's uh, likely that you may see 23 of those lots with two families and possibly 12 uh, family, but all 35 have the ability to be two family lots. And then 43 lots that are zoned suburban residential. So those will be single family lots. Um, the homes will be similar to what you see in the adjacent subdivisions, which is the Solenbrook Crossing as well as Romer Ponds to the south. And there's a number of different plans that are in uh, your packets that uh, shows uh, typical types of layouts for uh, the types of homes that Werner plans on uh, constructing in that subdivision. Um, uh, and I can let uh, Ross speak to those. Um, they will eventually have some uh, temporary signage on the site, and those would be uh, 
two 32 square foot signs that would likely be printed on wood posts just advertising the uh, subdivision. And then lastly, they are asking for one variance and that variance is to, um, uh, they will not be uh, constructing, we've, we've discussed this in the past, but they won't be dis, uh, constructing a typical uh, street section with curb gutter and gutter, uh, curb gutter and sidewalk. In this particular uh, subdivision, it'll be done with pavement uh, with a marked street path with drainage ditch, and only the main street, Stonebook Drive and Rimrock Road will have on, an on-street four foot wide pedestrian bike path that will be located on each side of the road. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions that are, you have. And I can answer any questions on the applicants here. Russ, would you like to add, add something? Thank you. Uh, Steve, I think you did a very good job of summarizing um, the development. I've been working on this for quite a while. I'm really looking forward to um, being able to put this you know, new development into the city. I think everyone knows there's a need for more residential um, lots in the city, and this would certainly um, help fill that need for uh, a couple of years here. I did want to comment on the variance. So we're looking for a variance from the tree uh, easement oh, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so looking at the road cross section, you're going to have the road, the, the ditch, and the, the standard city ordinance does require a tree easement next to the road right away. Uh, so we do have a six foot wider road right away to begin with, and the, talking with the city staff, Putting the trees after the ditch like that was not a, a, something they would desire to plant or maintain. So the trees would be at the plant and maintained by the individual homeowners. So that was the request for the variance was to um, not have an eight foot tree easement uh, on each side of the road right away. And uh, any questions, feel free to let me know. Any questions from the commission? Dave, I have. Yes, Jim. Dave, I have a couple. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, this is going to be a, an excellent uh, addition to my District 10 Ward 23. Uh, looking at the, uh, the photographs of the proposed houses there, they all look, they all look beautiful. And, uh, uh, and this is also going to add a lot of property tax base to the city, which is desperately needed. Uh, so that we can continue to provide the services that help to provide the services that we do for the citizens. Uh, I did have one question for Mr. Werner, and that is, what would be the uh, price point of the homes, you know, starting on the low end to the upper end? Yeah. So we think we could probably get homes potentially down to the 250 with lot, uh, fully built uh, and developed. Um, homes would generally go a bit higher than that. That's what we're finding we're building, but. Um, Looking at the base starting point, 250 to 300 would be uh, realistic. Um, and I would expect some homes to be approaching um, easily a half million dollars with new construction nowadays. So to answer the question okay. on overall, uh, I would uh, like to across. I'll just say overall, this would probably add, you know, we estimate around 50 million in tax base to the city up to potentially. Um, so it should be obviously a nice addition to the city. Excellent. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve subject to staff, uh, staff conditions. Motion on the floor, can I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? Here or not, Mr. Paul Why doesn't... Sure. Mayor Vandersteen is not here. Older person born. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Aye. Don Svitan. Aye. Six eyes. Motion passes. Thank you very much and good luck with the project. This sounds great. Okay. And item number four, our next meeting will be October 13th of the year. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Jerry. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> we have a motion to and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you all. Aye.